Hey guys, welcome back. And today we're going to be discussing more in depth the process of quenching. So I have three different quenchants here. This is obviously not representative of every quenchant that you can possibly have, but these are the three that I commonly use. Uh, on the right, on my right, I have a uh, just standard tap water. Just the standard water that you'd fill your mag tank with, or your sloth tank. I have brine, which this brine has actually had a, a little bit of surfactant, or uh, dish detergent, added, uh, just to break the surface tension. And then I have food oil. This is, this is rice bran oil, and it's been used, which is why it's a little bit darker, but that's not going to make a difference. So today what I'm going to do is I've got three files that I'm going to quench. All of them are exactly the same from exactly the same manufacturer. I'm going to use the water, the brine, and the oil. The pre oil is going to be preheated to 60 degrees Celsius. And then we're going to discuss how we use this in bladesmithing. But first, the quench. First, we're going to quench in water. Last but not least, the oil. Something to note about an oil quench is that even after quenching, it is still very hot. It will still boil water quite easily. So, as should be obvious from that demonstration, the three quenchants quench at significantly different speeds. Uh, oil obviously being very slow, water being a kind of, it's a lot faster than oil. <laughs> Uh, in this case, this is a medium quench oil, so uh, there are fast quench oils which would quench a little bit closer to what water does, but water still out quenches them. And then brine is incredibly fast. And uh, it's actually interesting, I will hopefully take photo, uh, a photo and display here, but um, there is a significant difference between the water, um, brine and oil quenches in the amount of scale they blew off due to the stresses induced in the quench. Uh, the brine having blown off way more scale than the water, and the water having blown off more scale than the oil. The oil mainly because the oil bakes onto the surface and actually burns black, so it creates its own scale layer. But anyway, so that is the three main quenchants, and that's to give you a little bit of a visual demonstration of what we're trying to accomplish with the steel, is the speed of the quench. Now quickly, I'm just going to run into a little bit of the theory behind quench speeds. So when it comes to heat treating steels, one of the first things you'll come across when researching online is a chart like this. Now all I'm going to do is go into a basic rundown, so don't skip ahead just yet. Uh, if you're looking for a more in-depth breakdown, I'm going to be doing a very in-depth video on my Patreon for supporters of the, uh, I believe it's journeyman level and above, uh, we'll get an in-depth breakdown of how these charts work. But basically, this is a quenching chart. Some people mislabel them as heat treating charts, but all they show you is how the steel forms into martensite, or how quickly. Now, obviously, on the bottom line, you have time, and that time normally spans from a couple of seconds all the way through. It's actually uh, an ever-increasing level, all the way out to days. And then you have temperature, which normally goes up to about the critical temperature, which is about 1450 to 1500 degrees 
Fahrenheit or 120 degrees Celsius thereabouts. So what this chart tells you is how quickly you need to take your steel from the critical temperature down to this line here, this blue dotted line, which it denotes when Martin site, sites, uh, Martin site starts forming. So this bulb here, the nose, sometimes it's called, is the perlite nose, and that's where all the soft material forms. So if you take longer to get your steel to the Martin site level than it requires to get into the perlite range, you're going to end up with soft material in your blade or axe or whatever you're trying to harden. Not all steels will have exactly the same chart. So every steel will have a different uh, speed at which they need to be quenched, all that kind of stuff to create Martin site. So a lot of it is denoted by the gap between the perlite nose and the temperature bar, the uh, y-axis. But sometimes it will just be a changing of the time factor on the bottom. So basically, the longer you have to get your material past the perlite nose, the, uh, you know, the slower the quench you can use. If you're using oil and stuff like that, you'll want to use, you can use an oil that may take a little bit longer time. The shorter period you have between here and here, the faster the quench needs to be. Now, you obviously need to avoid using seriously fast quenches on something that would actually take quite a long time to start developing perlite because that's going to put undue stress on the material. Um, so yeah, this is a basic rundown of the quenching diagram, but if you want an in-depth rundown, I will be doing one on my Patreon, so make sure you check that out. Um, I would do a larger breakdown at the moment, but this takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh, working through, and I you know, I really appreciate the support from my patrons and want to give back to them. So that is the basic rundown. So we, when we have a steel, we want to check how long it's going to take us to get down to the Martin site or how quickly we need to take it down to the Martin site level. And then we can guess on what, what uh, quenching we need to use. So next thing I'm going to do is I've got a number of blades that I made a couple of years ago. Um, they actually were forged in my first couple of years as a bladesmith. Uh, these here that I've held on to and I'm going to use several different techniques using the same quenchant uh, to show you the different ways that you can approach hardening blades. These are all forged from files uh, but we're going to approach the technique of quenching a little bit differently. So I'll get back to you when we start that. So the first blade I'm going to, to quench, they're all about the same size, slightly different designs, that's not going to affect us too much, they're forged to about the same thickness. That's all I'm worried about. And they're all forged from truly unknown steel because I never had these rasps tested or files tested back when I was forging as a beginner. So these will be quenched in water mainly because it's going to make it easier for me to demonstrate different things. You can see through the uh, material that I'm quenching through. Um, I would not recommend quenching in plastic often. Um, in this case, because I'm using water, I'm not overly worried. If I was using oil, then there is a good potential that this would melt and I would end up with a, well, floor full of oil in the best case. In the worst case, a floor full of flaming oil, which would be really, really bad. So yeah, don't quench in plastic very often, but um, in this instance, because I'm only quenching one blade in this specific container, I'm not worried about it. But I'm gonna heat this one up to critical temperature and I'm going to do what's called a full quench. Now, when quenching a full quench, it is highly recommended that you dangle the blade. The reason for that is because gravity is going to keep it perfectly perpendicular and you can quench straight down. One of the big problems I see with some people when they quench uh, with a directly downward quench is that they quench with the blade canted in one way or the other or leaned in one way or the other. And if you come in at an angle with your material, such as this, you know, with the, uh, the point to the side, you're gonna quench more of this material before you quench this material. What that's gonna do is cause this side to contract, but then this side to contract, and the big problem with that is that if this contracts too far in the first instance, that's how you end up with a warp. It's also how you end up with cracks. Otherwise, uh, blades canted this way and that doesn't so much matter when you're going perfectly vertical, which is why I tend to use a pair of tongs that have a small grip on the tang because they let it freely hang and I can just slip it into the water. 
So this is my preferred method for most quenching, but uh, this is only one of the three methods I'm going to show you. So we'll get to that. Straight up. And straight down. I'm leaving the tang out of the water because in this instance we don't really need to uh, worry about quenching the tang. Because we don't want the tang to be hard. And in this specific instance, because the blade is not directly connected to the tang, instead it has this recasso, we don't need to worry about it detempering the edge if we let the heat crawl back in a bit. But that is a full quench. Oops. Like I said, it's got a very light grip on it. And all I'll do is then let that sit in the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius for two hours, two times uh, for tempering. And that'll be a fully tempered blade. So. The next step in the uh, heat treating process is going to be what we know as edge quenching or partial quench. Uh, this can be used with chisels and stuff like that as well, but the basic idea is we're going to use this file steel knife, another one that I forged four years ago, and heat the entire thing to critical temperature and then quench just the edge, you know, perhaps part of the clip. The, uh, the depth of the edge quench will depend on what the uh, end purpose will be, uh, and I will go into further detail on that in, a, in my Patreon video on heat treating. But uh, for this example, we're going to use this knife, and we're going to quench to about that level there. The important thing with edge quenching is not to remove the steel from the, uh, the water bath until the bat spine has gone to at least black. And then, when you, once you've removed it, you want to then quench the entire piece to uh, cool off that back. Otherwise, you're going to start having temper colors run into your edge, which could be bad, especially given that the majority of the heat is going to be near the heel of the uh, blade, which I will cover in my next video on tempering. But for now, we're going to quench the edge on this one. when quenching an edge that you're not canting the blade one way or the other, leaning the blade, because the same thing that will happen if you do a missed entry or an angled entry on your full quench will happen to the blade. So you want to keep it nice and straight up and down. See it's slowly cooling to that black heat, at which point I'll be able to cool the rest of the base without worrying about having the colors around. There you go, edge brush. And here is what I was hoping would happen. I didn't normalize this blade on purpose to try and increase the stresses, but um, commonly in water quenches, you will have cracked blades. Now, I was originally going to quench, uh, to, to grind this to see if I could get a, a crack on camera, but instead I actually had something even better happen. Um, when you do edge quenches, differential quenches, you tend to end up with uh, unilateral stress. So you have stresses trying to pull the edge down, whereas this back material, which isn't hardening, will try and stay where it is. And especially with these hyperutectoid steels like W1, W2, they will separate, there we go, violently. 
Uh, and yeah, so this is actually, this crack here is actually the edge trying to come away from the spine, the unhardened spine of the piece. And this is why edge quench blades can be incredibly unreliable when it comes to uh, structural integrity. Um, having a soft spine and a hard edge is an important thing on a knife, uh, especially one that's going to, go, going to undergo a lot of strain. But partial quenching like this is incredibly dangerous to the blade. I'm now going to show you the third method, which is almost exactly the same as this, but it's a mix of this and full quenching, which is called partial heat quenching. Uh, and in this case, I'm going to be using my charcoal forge, but you could use an oxy LPG or an oxy acetylene torch to do this uh, procedure. But it basically, it resolves some of the issues you get with this steel, which I will explain more in the Patreon video. But yeah, this is what can happen, especially with uh, strong quenches like water and brine on large high carbon steel, which is, this is about 0.95, I would imagine. And um, <clears throat> when you've got full heat. So yeah, just keep that in mind. So I've shown full quenching and I've shown edge quenching. But now I'm going to get into using multiple quenchers at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat the edge of our blade using the charcoal forge, mainly because I don't have an oxyacetylene torch. And then I'm going to quench, full quench in water, and then move straight to my oil, which I have preheated to about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, which is a bit higher than you normally want to when you're quenching fully in oil. But the main reason for it is that I'm only going to spend a very short amount of time in the water to get that snap quench and then I'm going to move into the oil to slow that quench down, warm things up a little bit and soften the impact of the real hard stresses of uh, manipulating the martensite. And that's one of the biggest problems with water quenching is that it, because it's such a violent action of uh, hardening the steel quickly it creates those stresses that cause snapping like what we saw in that blade before. So in this case, what we're going to do is A, we're going to mitigate that really hard transition line between the hardened steel and the soft steel by heating the edge with the forge and fully quenching, meaning that everything cools down at the same time. But we're also going to slow the quench a little by transferring into oil. And if you're doing a water quench, I highly suggest doing what we call an interrupted water quench, which is what I'm going to do. And this works for if you're doing full quenching or edge quenching or anything like that. An interrupted water quench, if you want to use water, this is the best way to go about it. If a steel isn't hardening in oil, for whatever reason, if you're using an unknown steel and it's just not hardening in oil, this may be the way to get the best result for your unknown steel without risking cracking and snapping in the blade. Now I have normalized this one because I'm hoping that this one's going to come out okay, but whenever you're touching water with steel, the that effect of the steel cooling down so quickly can crack it there's always that risk uh it's not so much as true in oil because the oil takes longer to cool the blade down and as we saw in our diagram earlier that can mean that you do get some soft material in your steel if you're using the wrong kind of quencher but anyway i'm going to heat this up and i'll come back to you when we're ready to quench Ouch. and then into the water one two three and then into the oil. And then I'm going to let that rest in the oil until it's completely cooled. There we go. Try not to touch the oil bath because it's very hot. Just didn't want to knock it off the post. We're going to let that cool down until it's completely cooled. The water saps the heat so quickly that you don't need to spend a lot of the time in the water. Water can take the heat, especially out of the thin portions of your blade, the edge, in, you know, one second, maybe less. That's stopped boiling now, so we can take it out. And because the oil was slightly higher heat than we normally would have it, it will have put some more heat back into that edge and meant that it slowed down the transition rate from the soft austenite into the hard martensite. And we can now see, hopefully... Oh, on the camera. There is a nice transition line between the grey of the hardened steel 
and the black of the unhardened steel. And that's not cracked enough. But we'll come, we'll take this inside, dry it off, and I'll show you all three blanks. So there you have it. The three blades heat treated today. We have one fully quenched in water. One edge quenched in water. And one edge quenched, but with an interrupted water quench. Now, the fully quenched and interrupted water quench blades are going to go on to the next video, which will be tempering. I'm going to do an entire in-depth video on tempering. So if you're interested in that subject, please make sure to like and subscribe to see more content from me. That will be coming out on Friday. I upload every Wednesday and I have a video on Saturdays. Recently, I've been doing two videos a week. That may continue. We'll see what happens. As for the edge quench that snapped, I'm actually quite happy that it happened because I wanted to demonstrate again what can happen. But this will be part of a video I'm doing in the future on fixing mistakes when you make them in the shop. That'll be in a, a future video. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I had a great time. I love teaching this kind of stuff. If you want to support the channel, you can support me by buying stuff from me from Etsy. I have a whole bunch of stuff on there at the moment. Or you can become one of my patrons on Patreon. Uh, all the links will be down in the description below. Obviously my Patreons get uh, access to behind the scenes stuff and in-depth views on heat treating various other techniques that I try and cover, try and give back to those people who can support me in this craft. With that being said, I will see you on Friday. Thank you very much guys. This is a bonus piece of video for those of you who are uh, my true fans. I'm just showing you how I test my heat treats and stuff like that. You know, I said I snapped my files before I heat treat them. Well, I snapped them after too. These are the three files we quenched. This is the Brian quench, so the fastest quench. Really brittle, nice fine grain structure. That was really easy to snap. This is water. The water quench, slightly slower, but still quite fast. Whoa! Now, that snapped out here because the, it's an even thickness all the way through. And there was also a transition line, that's where it was sitting in the water. So that would be the transition line, much like the blade that cracked. That's where it cracked. Finally, the oil. She goes bang now the grain structure isn't fantastic because this is actually a high butectoid steel but as you can see it was a lot harder to break than the other two and they were all quenched at exactly the same peak so different uh different quenchants will provide different results thanks for watching guys make sure you comment thanks for the extra info in the comment section if you heard this bit of the video